All right, recording, recording. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, uh, let's try this again. Hopefully this works. Um, you okay, baby? Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Working now. God is good. Um, so, I'm g giving this another run. Um, so, we just tried to go live, but uh, something happened with, probably because of the weather or something, but uh, still, God is good. And uh, I just wanted to give everyone an update about uh, what's been going on. Um, a lot of things have been transpiring, and uh, some changes are headed my way. Um, a lot of good things headed my way. Um, a lot of bad things happened on the way, but um, God is still on the throne. And um, there's there's something that the Lord reminded me of uh, throughout the whole uh, episode that happened. Uh, because drama will try to always try to come your way, but nevertheless, God is still on the throne, and we are still accountable to His Word, accountable to do the right thing uh, no matter what anyone else says but to do everything unto the Lord with love and to love Jesus first and to love your neighbor second and uh, even if they want to be your enemy at the time being you're still called to love them amen and uh, so I just want to encourage some of you guys today hopefully this will bring a word of encouragement and uh, I have some uh, some word that is uh, hopefully can encourage someone and hopefully bring light to uh, what's been going on. Okay, So uh, let's just open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for just having your way and for showing everyone uh, who you really are, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, for revealing to us by your Holy Spirit what is your uh, intent of your heart and what is the revelation of your word. And reveal to us uh, what your plan and will is for our lives, Father. We seek you first, and we put everything else second. We love you, and help us dig into your word today through the Holy Spirit. And change us, Lord, and make us more like you every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right? So, um, a scripture that has been on my heart. I'm going to be reading out of Matthew 5 today, and out of the book of Titus, uh, chapter 3. Um, but... Matthew chapter 5, uh, I'm going to read from verse 37, okay? And uh, Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 37, it says, uh, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no, and whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard it is said, eye for an eye, and tooth for a tooth. And that's re reference to, that is reference to Exodus chapter 21, verse 24. And um, that is a very, very old school scripture about eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Um, and uh, that is in reference about um, revenge and uh, about, um, I believe it was about the Israelites taking over, uh, like, like the violent taketh by forth, uh, taking uh, by force, taking things what belongs to you and being violent about it in a holy way. But Jesus references that and says in verse 39, but I tell you, to resist an evil person and to whoever slaps you on your right cheek turn him also uh, the other cheek and if anyone wants to sue and uh, you and take away your tunic let him take your cloak also and whoever compels you to go one mile go with him too and uh, give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you do not turn away you have heard that it was said to love your neighbor and to hate your enemy. But I, I, I say to you, love your enemies. And that's verse 44. And that's going to be the key verse scripture for today. Uh, verse 44 of Matthew chapter 5 is, I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. And do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Because that you may be the sons of your father in heaven and he is a sunrise he makes the sun rise on evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust so for you who love uh, uh for you if you love those who love you what reward have you uh do you do even tax collectors do the same 
And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more, uh, what do you more than others? Doesn't even tax collectors do so? And I mean, he's really hating on the IRS in this scripture, but hear me out. <laughs> and uh, therefore, you shall be perfect, as in mature, and just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, what is that saying? That's, that's not saying we're going to be made uh, like exactly like God in deity and be God of the universe and everything like that. But it's saying that you will be mature and you will be walking in love as Christ walks in love. Hi, Auntie Karen. God bless you. Love you. Um, that's what we're called to do is to walk in love. No matter what the circumstance or the situation may be, um, I want to encourage you guys to remember the big picture. Even though uh, we may come across different circumstances and situations where people have different opinions than us or uh, different views and op uh, opinions or outlooks on life, we are all called still to love them. Amen. And, um, and that was the big conviction that the Holy Spirit put on my heart today is because um, what's most important that Jesus is glorified, that people uh, be encouraged. And, um, and because sometimes doing the right thing isn't always the best and the easiest thing to do. Um, uh, doing the right thing is always the best thing to do, but it's not the easiest. It's not the, the easiest path. Is not always where you're supposed to go and uh, a lot of people don't want to um, they don't want to turn heads or they don't want to offend or step on anybody's toes but that's I came to a point in my life where I had to choose to follow God or follow man and I had to make a choice whether to be obedient to the word and what the word says to do or to follow the crowd and do what everyone else is being told to do and the best advice I can give somebody is just to follow Jesus and to follow God because sometimes every no man is perfect man will fall short and man has to be your uh, your friend and uh, your brother in Christ but it can't be your everything uh, we can only follow God with with no hesitation if we follow man with any hesitation, then, um, then that can be flawed uh, doctrine. That could be flawed theory because uh, we are putting people on a pedestal where Jesus should be number one in our heart. And uh, I just want to remember, remind you guys of uh, when we follow God, it's, uh, it's a daily challenge. It's a daily fight of faith. And daily, it's a uh, it's a process, just like the uh, the last um, the last episode that we had. Uh, we, I was talking about falling in love with Jesus, and when you fall in love with Jesus, it should be an everyday process. It's, it doesn't mean that you should be uh, religious, and it doesn't mean that you should be uh, walking in fairyland, thinking everything's going to be okay when uh, things obviously aren't always okay. But it's all about perspective, about falling in love with Jesus. It's about walking with Jesus every single day. And um, be it a good day or a bad day, God is still on the throne and he still loves you. And that alone is enough motivation to do the right thing. And um, that's what I've learned uh, throughout this whole process uh, is learning that, that we are all called to deep, to be deep in the word, to be deep in relationship with God and to and just to be um, in a way of uncompromising for the Word of God and for the Spirit of God and and you know what I mentioned before in another podcast is when you're showing an example of what the love of God is it's it's gonna make you look like a nobody sometimes you're gonna be the outcast some sometimes you're gonna be the oddball standing out you're gonna be made fun of you're gonna be talked about because sometimes showing love and uh, and upholding the Word of God to where it should be sometimes it will make you unpopular and it will make you uh, a controversial person um, but when when things are brought up I, I came across some uh, some things that I disagreed with, uh, what which um, that I was being taught, and I addressed it, you know, according to the word, because I didn't know what to do, and uh, so that's just like I mentioned. Do you um, uphold the word uh, as number one, or do you uphold the person that you follow as number one? And 
And so I came to a crossroads where I had to do, what does the Bible say about the situation? I know I'm being told this, being told that, how we should handle the situation and to let things go and whatnot. But but you, it's, you're never safe if you just take people's word for granted and you just take it as it is and what you're told to do. That's not a safe place to be. It's always the right thing to do to ask God, what do you want me to do? Amen. And so I dug into the word. I, dig some, I did some uh, research and, and it's not coming from a, uh, when I wanted to present what the word said about it, about the situation that was brought to my attention, it's, um, I, I, I pity the person. It wasn't a matter of revenge or me wanting to throw anyone under the bus or trying to get someone in trouble and it wasn't like that but whether whether or not they say so I was accountable for what I know and now that I have knowledge I'm accountable what to do with that knowledge and I wanted to take it to the Bible and what does the word say and um, to do that, it takes love, man. It's it's the hardest thing I ever had to do was to follow the word, uh, despite what I was told. And um, but I think I've grew, uh, I've grown a lot from it. And um, I won't go into detail out of matter of uh, respect. Um, and but because it's after I settled it and after I had already decided what to do and walked away from the situation. It was brought up again, and it was being uh, screenshotted to me and texted to me, and it was being, it, it, it kept on coming back, even though I, I let it go, because people were spreading rumors about me behind my back, and saying that I'm, I'm saying malicious things about people, and saying that uh, I was um, spreading rumors, or these kind of things, and, uh, and I was already done and over it. You know, and I walked away from the situation and it kept on coming back because I can, after you leave a body, the remaining parts continue to talk about you and it's convenient and easy because you're gone and people like to talk about you after you're gone if you stand out and, um, and that's kept on, that's what kept happening, especially from leadership. Um, and so they were saying false things and and because they were saying I continued to talk about this individual that fell short and I wasn't I was done and over it but they were using me in a storyline to uh, to further their agenda and saying that Justin is going around and doing this oh I thought you should know that Justin's talking about you blah 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 and even though I walked away and I was done with it. And so I had to set the record straight that no, I'm not still, I'm not going around telling rumors. I'm not going around trying to throw anyone under the bus. But I'll tell you what though, I did what was right. And nobody else had the guts to do it. And it is what it is. People have heard rumors. People have heard things uh, that everyone turned the blind eye to. Everyone. And without question, why? Why not take it up to God? Why not take it up to the scriptures to see what Jesus said? See what the Holy Spirit said, how to deal with the situation? Because it's not my situation, but it was presented to me. And and if it's part of leadership, and it's a part of people, uh, uh, a part of groups that hundreds, maybe thousands of people follow, it has to be addressed. Uh, uh, has to be addressed not because of um, wanting to stir the pot, but for the integrity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that is is what most important. Not someone's reputation, not someone's um, you know, uh, I don't know, someone's facade. I don't know. Nothing is more important than the gospel, and what we represent is the gospel. And if that's in, and if that is compromised, it has to be addressed, man. That's why people walk away from church. If they find one hypocritical thing in leadership or if they find one thing wrong, if they hear one little rumor, they don't want nothing to do with Jesus because that's who we represent. So we individually are all accountable to walk with Christ uh, in the utmost respect to the word because people are looking at you. And when people are watching you every step and they're looking to see if you get easily offended or if you fall into temptation 
or if you want to hide sin and lie to people about it or if you want to uh, go around and um, sleep sleep around on, on your wife or if you want to go and uh, if you want to go uh, do drugs if you want to go uh, gang bang or something like that and you, they know you're a Christian then they will see the church automatically as a hypocritical body because we are associated with the church that we are associated with Jesus and that's who we represent now if people far away that are considering getting to know Jesus but they see us walking in sin or trying to hide sin in leadership then they don't want nothing to do with this that's why there's no growth to the body that's why um there's that's why people aren't coming to the lord because they see that oh if if that's what jesus is like i don't want none of it and and that is the reality of what's going on and but if someone like me is to address the situation then then it looks like we're trying to be the bad guy and it looks like we're trying to make trouble but it's not for anyone's reputation or for anyone's uh you know gain but it's about the loss that we're having uh to the body and um so what i've learned through this whole situation is the most important thing is to love 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 yes love covers and and i and i completely agree and but also real love will tell you the truth and real love will to, will stand up for what is right, even if they're spat in the face or uh, backstabbed or whatever. I love every single person, every single person, no matter how I'm treated, whatever, because God first loved me. And we are all called to love everyone, especially your enemies, especially your enemies, because God loves everyone. And if first Christ, Christ loved you, then we have no right to withhold that love from anybody. No matter what what they say about you behind your back, no matter what they do when you're gone, no matter if they talk about you after they leave, or no matter if anyone is uh, trying to make a false image of you or use your name to, to make gain and to make them look good, whatever. I love them. I love them, man. I love them. And I pray for them. And I pity them. And it's because um, we don't have to stoop down to any level to try to spread rumors or try to um, you know try to do what we think is right no if we all did what the word said we're good if we all do our own research instead of doing as we're told and we do what the word says the world will be a better place but but the latter doing what the word says is much harder to do than uh, what we feel is the right thing to do and um, so that's what I learned throughout this whole process is is just we got to love everybody everybody it's loving people loving your enemies Pe pray for those who spitefully use you bless those who curse you love on them and and that's what Jesus did on the cross after they brutal brutally murdered him spit on his face the king of kings and the Lord of Lords was spat on beaten was 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 beaten to a pulp he didn't even look human anymore that they whipped him that they crucified him but yet when he's hanging there dying barely can breathe suffocating his his lungs is filling up with blood his face mutilated crown of thorns driven into his skull he said lord forgive them father forgive them they don't know what they're doing forgive them father and he's still and, and, and this is, I want to put this into perspective too, because we so want revenge sometimes, right? We want to, oh, like, oh, I can tell them or I can, you know, that stirs up in you. But it's not worth it because the battle is the Lord's. And what's the most right thing to do is to do what the Bible says, to be slow to anger and to be fast to listen and to slow to be slow to speak and just to love your neighbor love love your brother as you love yourself to do those unto other that you would be like to be done unto you to love christ first and to love your neighbor second and to love your enemies even though they may hate you even though they may talk about you right so titus chapter three um paul told titus in chapter three and said remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities and to obey to be ready for every good work 
to speak evil of no one and to be priest peaceful gentle showing all humility to all men for we ourselves are also once foolish disobedient deceived serving various lusts and pleasures and uh, living in malice and, and envy help hateful and hating one another but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by righteousness of works by which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of the regeneration of the renewing of the Holy Spirit okay so the key verse here is what I what I see is um, is number verse 3 is that for we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient deceived serving various lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful and loving and, and hating one another but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy who saved us through the washing and the generation of the Holy Spirit man he poured out upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior that having been justified by his grace that we should become heirs according to the eternal life of hope that was chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 so we we were once foolish we were once disobedient we were deceived we were living in malice and envy and hating one another that's how we used to live as before we, we received Jesus but the right thing to do is to love those love those who may not be walking in the word as they ought or to love everyone who tries to come against you in Jesus name to love everybody to love them no matter what and God is so good that it has to be put into perspective about why why are we here and why are we dealing with all these different personalities and these situations and these circumstances because we have to share the love of Christ with every single person that we come across and uh, you know it's not easy it's not but it's the right thing to do to love people and when Jesus was hung on the cross and he was getting beaten just like I was being like I was saying before is that a lot of people don't want to be looked at like uh, a wuss or a what's another word that I could use <laughs> or like a sissy or if um, I, they don't want to look a certain way like a punk they don't they don't want to be uh, look uh, inferior right so they they don't really want to do the right thing because it will make them look a certain way but you know what I'm sure Jesus felt the same exact way I'm sure Jesus knows how it feels uh, to, to to be so in in a position where he could have called legions of angels to save him from the cross and people spitting on him making fun of him mocking him saying aren't you the son of God aren't you supposed to be uh, you know all-powerful aren't you the king of Jews you know come on down from the cross if you're God if you claim to be the son of God go ahead come on down but he didn't and he loved them he said father forgive them they don't know what they're doing why don't we do the same thing to love our neighbor and to forgive them and the, the key word in to forgive is to give it before it happens to make sure that we are always walking in love always oh. okay Xander go away you are singing so so loud come here all the kids and dogs want to be so loud today but um, see look come on Xander who that what's your name Xander why are you singing loud can you want to yeah no, I want to do the on show. You don't want to make do the on the show? No. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, no. Better not, you better not make do do on the show. What do you think of, um, our, do you love Jesus? 
Do you love God? No. No? <laughs> You're being silly. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you pray to Jesus every single night? Do no. you pray? Do we pray when we go to bed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're so silly. You know and yeah, know and yeah. This is the star of the show, everybody, today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a God like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a girl like you. Yeah, yeah. That's his favorite song. Okay, goodbye. Go, go in mommy's room and sing. Okay. Special guest Xander. Xan the man Utley. <laughs> Jeez, everyone's so loud today. Um, I'm definitely doing these before uh, when no one's home from now on. Anyway, um, so go, go mommy's room. Bye bye. Uh, let's see. When Jesus was hanging on the cross. <laughs> When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he could have said anything that, um, he could have done it all. He could have said, you know what, forget you guys, I'm getting down and I don't want to die on the cross. You guys are ungrateful, you hypocrites, you this, you that. He could have, he had every right to. Because the very people that he gave life to, the very people that he was dying for, was spitting on his face and was murdering him in cold blood, publicly and uh, but I wanted to share some definitions with you guys too because the word it says some things that we I don't think we know uh, what, what the true meaning is we are called to exhort our brothers and sisters e-x-h-o-r-t exhort what does that mean to urge on or encourage especially by shouts so it's like, it's, it's another definition is to force or impel on a, in, uh, on a specific direction, okay? And we're also called to admonish our leaders. What does admonish mean? A-D-M-O-N-I-S-H. To warn or reprimand someone firmly. To advise or urge earnestly or to warn someone of something to be avoided. The Bible says to exhort and to admonish your brothers and sisters in Christ, especially your leaders. Now, when we hear spe specific words like that um, in the Bible, we like to just assume that it means to give them props. Yeah, I'll, I'll admonish you, bro, God bless, man, you know? But that's not what it means. Uh, what, it's, what it's meaning is to to warn a reprimand and so if you feel a brother in the Lord and now this is only to other people that are also follower of Jesus who also are um, following Christ you as a brother in Christ also have the right to warn him in love to do the right thing to say hey man you know be careful of that I don't think that's the right thing to do you know because me and you are Christians and we are uh, we are representatives of Christ. So therefore, if we are representing Christ to the world and you are doing this in your life, then I feel that should be addressed brother to brother, one on one, in love. I got to tell you, man, I don't think you should be doing this. Okay. Now, that is the biblical thing to do. But if they're a person that, who doesn't follow God, maybe doesn't even believe in God or doesn't even know Jesus, then you have no right to do those things because then they are covered under love and grace then because the Bible says that the love of God leads man to repentance so if they don't know Jesus yet and they don't know God and they're doing their own thing then you just love on them and tell them that they are accepted as they are because we all are you don't have to change your life to come to Christ but I'll tell you what when you when you come to Christ then he's gonna change some things about you so you can represent him better to the world but it's not about you're not good enough it's not about that you can't make it or you don't cut it but it's because of what we represent in the body that people need to know that there is a God and we have to be full-on representatives of him but it doesn't mean you're called to be perfect but you are supposed to be slowly and slowly perfected in Christ 
every single day, growing in God, growing with Christ. And that's what it's all about, is to always grow, to always love those. Even though they may say things or do things to you that aren't of God, you have to do the right thing. Oh, here's another guest. Good morning, you want to come on the show? Let me fix your hair so you don't look so crazy. Good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Do you pray every night? Yeah. Do you love going to church? Yeah. Oh, did you like the other church that we went to visit? Yeah. Can you say something other than yeah? No. <laughs> okay. Um do you what's what's your favorite prayer? Do you wanna do you wanna pray for everyone? Everyone listening, Sophie's gonna pray for you guys. You wanna pray for them? <laughs> Can you pray? You already had your time, Xander. <laughs> so Sophie's gonna pray you know, so there's a lot of people who are uh watching this and maybe going through something, Sophie. So what if they're hurt? What if they need prayer? Can you help me pray for them? Okay, so Sophie's going to pray for you guys, and I'm going to pray for you guys too, okay? I'm going to come to a close. But just the, the topic of today is just to love your enemies because the world is too big, and uh, God is so big that it's not worth holding grudges against anybody. We may have differences in opinion of how things should be handled. It should be, um, we may have different ideas of what the word says, but if we agree to disagree, I don't care. I love you guys anyway. I'm just trying to do my best to follow the word, right? So that's all I'm doing. So, so um, Sophie, why don't you why don't you pray for them? And uh, and uh, hey, we're gonna pray after, okay? Okay. okay? So Sophie, uh, you want to pray for them and uh, pray for them because they're going through something, okay? You wanna pray? Go ahead, pray. Dear Jesus. Okay, pray for them. Pray for them. <laughs> okay, we please uh, we pray for these people. Pray for these people. No matter what they're going through. No matter what they're going through. That you can be with them always. You can be with them always. So if you guys don't know Jesus and you want to have eternal life in Christ, then we're going to lead you guys in a prayer that you can follow along with us. And Sophie's going to repeat after me because she did this prayer before. But if you guys want to do it with us, you can. And uh, Xander, you can come too if you want. Come right here. So if you guys want to pray with us, <laughs> and we're gonna, you guys are going to repeat after me, okay? Okay. okay? <laughs> Say, Father God. Father God. Okay, we're going to do it for real, okay? Father God. Uh, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I make you, I make you my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. We love you, we love you. <laughs> for all of our days. For all of our days. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, guys. Um, simple prayer like that, just asking the Lord to come into your heart. And if you guys are going through things and uh, you you don't know... Um, he was grandma. If... That's not grandma. I'll show you a picture after, okay, of who that is, okay? Mm -hmm. So we love every single one of you guys. Thank you for always being there for us. Um, this was a, a different episode, but roll with the punches, right? So God is still on the throne, and... Uh, we encourage you guys to always remember that life isn't easy, but you are promised that you are an overcomer. And you can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. So God bless you guys. Mommy's watching a podcast. Yes, she is watching. I love you guys. And remember to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Take care. God bless.